So admittedly, I don't like to watch all of the South African films. I skip a good chunk of them. I know the, the attitude they want you to have is local is lacquer, support local. Every now and then you hear about a film that's like really good and everybody says, okay, you have to watch this. And you kind of watch it, not just hoping for a good movie, but kind of hoping for, <laughs> for something big that'll just like change the South African film industry forever. If we can kind of like curb our desires a little bit, I think we're probably better off just either hoping for something that is fun and exciting that isn't blatantly wishing it was a Hollywood film or else just something small and something true. And I think Sync kind of falls into that second category. Picking your favorite South African film is maybe not as easy as it used to be. I think over the past like three years, there've just been a couple of, of good ones, especially if you want sort of more artsy, interesting kind of stuff that ex explores our own South African kind of dynamics. But my favorite film is a film called Sink from 2015, which is really, great and I think it, it tops all of these other films in a couple of ways but it also needs to come with kind of its own warning labels a little bit it needs to come with a couple of caveats you need to be in the right frame of mind I think for this one uh, the, the stuff that it does well I feel that it does that better than any of the other South African films so Sink 2015 is the feature film debut for a guy named Brett Michael Eines and it's based on a novel written by the same guy. So it's a really personal drama that kind of centers around the relationship between three main characters. On the one hand, you have this sort of upper middle class married couple, Michelle and Chris Jordan. And on the other hand, you have Rachel, their Mozambican live-in housekeeper who keeps the house tidy for them. The relationship that becomes really uncomfortably strained and they are unable to look each other in the eye anymore. They're avoiding each other and you don't know why. Now it is a very personal drama and it is sort of a backhanded political film, but don't let that mislead you, okay? This thing is really structured like a mystery and what kind of holds it together, what keeps you, what pulls you through from the beginning to the end of the film is this mystery structure where you're, you're, you're cutting back and forth from the present where things are horrible. They can't look each other in the eye. It's this weirdly uncomfortable situation and you have no idea why it's that way. And you're cutting from that to the past where things seem a little bit more idyllic, obviously not perfect, but a little bit better. There are some leftover croissants if you would like some. Oh, and I left a bag full of old clothes on the counter. Go through it, grab what you want before I take the rest of the church. Okay, okay. thanks. You. You're cutting back and forth and you can't help but wonder how things got there. And you get a little bit of clue here, another clue there. It's designed to give away the twist long before the film gives it to you. It gives you enough information to figure out what's going on long before you need to know it, you know? And so I think every person who watches this film probably figures out the situation at a different point in the movie. The parts that made me uncomfortable were the parts that were taking place when things were better, before everything got messed up. That's the stuff that, that hits you first, is it's showing you what things look like before anything went wrong. And you kind of don't like what you see. I mean, you see Rachel going through the house in the, early in the morning, there's this long steady cam shot that they cut intercut with. And it's her going through the house early in the morning, switching off the alarm so that Chris and Michelle can stay in bed for a bit longer. She turns on the coffee machine. She cleans up like a bunch of dirty plates and stuff that they just left everywhere. And you know, when you see something like that, your knee jerk reaction is to say, you know, come, did you have to leave everything for her to clean up? But the very next moment, is this dark cloud of guilt where you realize I've done exactly the same thing. My first time watching this movie was literally the first time I'd ever actually 
considered that, actually taken a moment to, to let that sink in, to let the state of this relationship actually sink in. There's stuff that they do for you that you don't even want to know, you know, like there's this one shot that goes on just for a few seconds too long of the housekeeper kind of picking out hair out of the drain. It's from a distance. So it's this wide shot of the bathroom and you just see her like reaching in at the drain, picking out. So it's not gruesome, but you know what she's doing. And if that's happening in your house, I think most people are instinctively looking away and trying to pretend it isn't happening. You know, I mean, it's amazing how thinly veiled the illusion is that all it takes to shatter that illusion is to literally just make you look at what's happening for a couple seconds too long. Having a movie literally shatter an illusion for you is a pretty powerful experience to have. And I think that's part of why I've held on to this movie for a while. While I, why I kind of still think it's the best South African movie. It, 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 amazingly common thing in South Africa. I mean, everyone I know who's got a house has a housekeeper. It's just sort of the way things have played out here. And it's uncomfortable to talk about. It's uncomfortable to bring up because it's so closely tied into some very sensitive stuff. I feel like other South African films have made that attempt to explore some of South Africa's cultures. And I feel like at the moment, maybe that's the right thing to do, to have these films that kind of microscope in on aspects of South African culture, Afrikaans culture, or um, some of the other cultures that I'm totally out of touch with in South Africa. We have, I mean, it's, we, we kind of fly this flag really high that we're the country with 11 official languages. Wow, it's so amazing how multicultural we are. We don't really like to bring up the fact that most people, a person like me, only knows English. I barely know Afrikaans. I'm in the country with 11 official languages and I speak one of them. So other South African films have kind of explored, microscoped in on individual cultures. This film, it actually gives you a sense of the friction between cultures and the, the kind of awkward, uncomfortable state of things in South Africa post apartheid. But what this movie does that makes it especially great is that it doesn't take these on as political issues. It isn't attempting to, to go full on and make a political statement, uh, you know, or to make, to, to make conclusions for you to make political conclusions for you. It zeroes in 100% only on this personal relationship, this personal drama that happens between th three people. It's a tiny movie. It's a small indie drama that has such massive consequences. You know what I mean? Huge implications. This is a film with unity. It's authentic. And there's this clear voice there's a conceptual flair to this movie that is so rare in South African movies. And that I think still sets this movie apart from, from everything else that, that we, we put out as a country. For all those reasons, I really love this movie. And I feel like it's a truly uniquely South African film. So that's really my thoughts on the film. That's, that's how I feel about this movie. But I, I do feel like it needs to come with some caveats. It needs to come with those warning labels that I mentioned. I don't think it comes a, as a surprise that it's a bit of a tearjerker. And I do sort of mean that in a negative sense, uh, where there are those scenes that just hold on an actor crying for a long time. Scenes where you can sense a filmmaker saying, okay, cry now, cry. And if you don't connect with what's going on in that moment, it's easy to feel kind of cynical. I mean, people have changed since CinemaSins and YMS. Uh, people love being cynical. We love it. I mean, we get such a kick out of it. We get off on being cynical. But 
in this case, I think it really benefits you as a viewer to try and kind of go into it a little bit more open to whatever happens, to whatever the movie has to offer you. You can pick up your cynicism again on the way out and then you can look at it with a critical eye and pick it apart because the stuff that's great about this movie is truly great, but those things are small and delicate and easily crushed, I think, by a little bit of cynicism. If you can just go in totally open, this movie will reward you for it. But if you're going in cynical, you're gonna hate it from the get-go. I have to say, it's kind of hard for me to talk about this movie without thinking about Roma. And I just did that Roma review a couple of months ago, I think. And I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit. I'm saying a lot of the same stuff about this film that I said about Roma. I mean, it's it's very similar, almost to the point where I, ha I have like that unrealistic sneaking suspicion that Alfonso Cuaron might have seen this movie in 2015 before I did Roma. I wouldn't, but I wouldn't put my money on it, but <laughs> just because they're so similar in their subject matter, like what they're talking about is so similar, but also some of some of the, the approaches to that subject matter is really similar. Like the opening to, to Roma, the opening 10 minutes of Roma is so much like that long steady cam sequence in, in sync where, where you're, you're just given an opportunity for a period of time that's maybe a bit too long to just take in what this person does for a living and actually be forced to kind of confront it. That opening shot of Roma where she's sweeping and when you find out what she's doing exactly, that hits me, you know. They both do the same thing in their own way. You know what I mean? So who knows, maybe I'll, I'll look into some more Mexican films. Uh, Cause my, my goal, I guess, is to figure out what it really would take to make really amazingly great South African films that people would love, you know? What does that mean? You know, what, what is a, a great South African film? And I think there's probably examples of that kind of thing in Mexico, countries like South Africa. So if there's any uh, South African people watching, please just uh, let me know if you guys actually want me to review some of the big name South African films like uh, The Gods Must Be Crazy, Sotsi, uh, what else is there? Uh, oh, The Wound, that might be a good one. Uh, Dracula 3000, maybe, who knows. If you want me to review that stuff, just kind of leave it in the suggestion box. If I don't get any comments, I'll know. I'll know, okay, you guys have had enough. We've had enough of the South African stuff. We're done. <laughs>